Treasure is all around us. In the wreck of a Spanish galleon. In the yard of a mysterious faith healer. Does this cannon contain pirate treasure? Did John Dillinger stash 200 grand in the north woods of Wisconsin? Is the California gold rush over or just beginning? Join us as we search America for hidden riches on The Hunt for Amazing Treasures. Tony Sabato Jr. The word treasure fires the imagination with thoughts of sunken galleons full of gold, lost mines and buried jewels waiting to be found. From the dawn of time, people have scouted the earth for hidden wealth, both natural and man-made. Tonight, we will search America for treasures, diamonds, gold, cash and collectibles like rare cars and priceless historical documents. We'll see the first performance film of Elvis Presley, just discovered in a Houston attic, and take the first look inside a pirate's treasure cannon. And we'll recover a million dollar emerald from the Atocha, a Spanish galleon that sank with hundreds of millions in treasure off Key West, Florida. We will start a hunt with Mel Fisher, the greatest treasure hunter of them all. We have all heard of treasures found in basements and attics, but in a little house in a small Indiana town, the walls were literally stuffed with treasure. It was like a dream come true. I mean, there's no other way of putting it. It's like winning the lottery. What Bill found was the first of a huge hoard of nearly 8,000 rare movie posters. We had purchased the house, and we knew the roof was bad. And uh, we were in it about a week, and we had a big rainstorm, and all of a sudden, the water is coming through the roof. So, I mean, we didn't even have the money to put the roof on it, and we called roofers. <laughs> it's like, we gotta fix it, call roofers. We'll figure out how to pay for it later. While the roofers were working outside, Bill began pulling down a water-damaged section of wall. So we were tearing down plaster and stuff, and all of a sudden, there, we found, started finding these cars. I didn't know what they were or if they were of any major value, but I knew they were old and, I mean, just the look of them, they were great. So we started calling around, got a hold of some people, told them what we had. We had dealers flying in from all over the place. I mean, it was like, you have what? You, an old house? Movie what? You know, where are you? <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll be there. They had demoed some of the walls the exterior walls, and so they had some material for me to look at, but it was really only after ripping down quite a few walls, which I had the pleasure of doing. Each piece of drywall I tore, tore down, I didn't know what was gonna be back there, and um, so it was just really exciting to see that stuff in its natural state, the way it's discovered. I mean, it had been entombed in these walls for 60 years. All this paper, this old paper, and it's worth money, <laughs> you know? So it was, it was really exciting that way. At first, we didn't know it, the extent of how, how good a find it was because so much of the condition is important from what we found out, and the condition was so good because they had just been like time capsule. The owner of the house in the 1930s ran the local movie theater and used thousands of old movie posters as insulation. Little did he know that he was bearing a treasure behind the walls that would one day be worth several hundred thousand dollars. They had used all these, what we came to know as window cards because they're a uh, different size and they fit right between the studs and they used them for insulation. They stacked them in there five and six deep and uh, they were a discard as far as the theater was concerned and you got seven every day so you know it was cheap insulation it's a depression and they were just like being in a time capsule they were absolutely preserved perfectly a few nail holes and you know a little water damage on the outside ones but otherwise it was just <laughs> incredible that they were in such good condition 
one of the main things with posters is when you find a piece that encapsulates an entire genre of film or somebody's entire career in one image. You're gonna get what's coming. You can't get me, I'm under arrest. Oh, no. I'm no angel. Of course, I didn't call it I'm no angel for nothing. <laughs> Don't forget, come up and see me sometime. <laughs> Probably the Footlight Parade defines a whole generation of film and art. I mean, it's, it is the, it's a significant art deco image, but it also defines this Busby Berkeley, splashy musical, which really was very successful in the early 30s. This one is probably worth uh, about uh, maybe 10 to 15,000. Posters from the early 30s have, are just impossible to find. This material came from that time period. So that was one of the really great things was that it was just rare, there were rare posters from a rare time period and there are really very few other things from those films that are representative. Well, one of the most recognizable things which turned out to be um, Probably one of the greatest things in the entire group was uh, something from Girl from 10th Avenue with Betty Davis, which is an image which really defines her film career. It's kind of a, a seductive sex goddess. And this particular image, there had never, there's no other known posters uh, with this image on it. And so when I saw that, when I tore down the drywall, it was just, I'm even getting like, goose pimples now thinking about it. it was so exciting this image is probably worth um, right now about uh, maybe eighty five hundred dollars it was the largest group of posters that I've ever known to have surfaced at one particular time so we found seventy five hundred to eight thousand posters in this small very unassuming house in Michigan City Indiana and the total value of all of these posters over time will be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is the only one that was this title, so that was sort of the, the special one to keep and kind of summed it all up in one big thing. We're in the money. We have found treasures in the ground, in our attics, in barns, at flea markets and at the bottom of the ocean. And as long as valuables continue to be hidden from us, someone will search for them. And for those of you who dream of finding your own treasure, we wish you good luck and happy hunting. Good night.